Yo, what up guys, Bo here. On my last video, I talked about some of the everyday apps I use on my iPhone 10. So it's only fitting that I make a follow-up video with what's on my Mac. I'm currently rocking a late 2016 15-inch MacBook Pro with Touch Bar running High Sierra 10.13. I use it primarily for video production and photo editing. I'm gonna go over the apps today on my dock first, which are my most used. I try not to list every single app in the dock because I like to keep it tidy. But over time, I'll swap certain apps that I don't use that often with ones that I do. First up is Safari. There's really no special reason aside from using gestures. All the bookmarks sync through iCloud, so it's super useful when I jump from this MacBook Pro to my 12-inch MacBook. Plus, all the internet links that I click through my emails will automatically bring up Safari anyways. However, due to the change that YouTube made to its video codec about a year ago, Safari no longer supports the ability to watch 4K videos. So for that, I head up Chrome. I'm not a big fan of as a user interface, but maybe that's due to using Safari for so many years. There are some websites that do provide a better experience with Chrome. Hey, options are wonderful. I use a default email client and it gets the job done. It's not very pretty or fancy, but I don't do a lot with it aside from some simple organization. I do find a search ability to be a lot better compared to some of the other email clients I've used in the past. Just like my iPhone, Notes is an app that I use constantly, whether it's to jot down YouTube ideas, temporary passwords, grocery lists, and so on. Oh, and the ability to add people for collaboration is also a great feature. I was a Lightroom user until I heard about Capture One Pro made by the high-end medium format camera maker, Phase One. I really love its customization ability and its raw converter, which I feel is a step better than Lightroom's. I don't edit photos on a regular basis, at least not as much as I used to. So I feel like it would be a waste to be on Adobe Creative Cloud's subscription plan. But at the end of the day, it's a personal preference. You can't really go wrong with either one. Next is the app that I use the most, Final Cut Pro 10. This is the only video editing software I have ever used, so I don't really have anything to compare it to, but the learning curve is not steep at all. If you're familiar with iMovie, then you'll feel right at home with this user interface. Before 10.4, I always say its biggest weakness is its color correction tools, which is very basic to say the least, which is why I rely heavily on a plugin called Color Finale Pro that's very similar to Premiere Pro's LumaTree. However, 10.4 was a major update, and you can do a lot more color tweaking from its color wheels to hue and saturation curves. I also have a ton of plugins from Motion VFX. This isn't sponsored by them, but hey, if you guys are watching, feel free to drop me a line. I just really enjoy their style of various transitions, call-outs, special effects, graphs, and various animations. If at any time you see any effects in one of my videos, chances are it's from Motion VFX. ScreenFlow is one of the most popular screen capture programs around, and it's also used for this video. You can capture part of the screen or the entire screen and customize various aspect ratios, or if you want HD or 4K. But what makes it so unique is its built-in editing function. It's extremely powerful, and I probably don't even 10% of its full potential. The editing user interface is very similar to Final Cut Pro, so these two programs are a perfect match. Have you ever wanted to upload photos taken with your camera to Instagram, or upload a few photos all at once? I can't imagine how big of a pain in the butt that is to have the crazy workflow of taking pictures with your camera, transferring to your computer, do the edits, send them back to your phone, and upload to Instagram only one at a time. This is where Flume comes in. There are two versions, free and pro. The pro version allows you to select a folder and choose multiple photos to upload at once. If you want to post your photos taken with your camera, this will save you a ton of time by not having to send them back to your phone, plus its ability to upload multiple photos in one shot. So if you post a lot of Instagram photos taken with your camera, this is a no-brainer. Just like on my iPhone, I use TweetBot for macOS. The interface is pretty much the same as the iOS version. Of course, I don't usually tweet from my desk, but for the times that I do, this is a great app. You can access all the usual suspects from the left pane, like mentions, DMs, activities, likes, and so on. Trello is another macOS app that I use that has an iOS version I mentioned on my What's on my iPhone 10 video here. This is a really good organizational app that I primarily use to list my YouTube video ideas. The premise is really simple. For all the tasks, you have a beginning, a middle, and an end, which they call to do, doing, and done. For each bucket, you can attach various cards with labels, due dates, and attachments if there are multiple phases to a task. You can also collaborate with other people on the same tasks. The background is totally customizable, and there are a ton of backgrounds to choose from. 
And of course, whatever you do on the desktop version, it will automatically sync to the mobile version. When I do voiceovers, I use Audacity. It's a free audio software that is very popular within the YouTube community. I don't do anything fancy or complicated with my audio, so I don't really see a need for Adobe Audition. And Audacity is great if you just want plug and play. I have a Sonos system in my house, and the Sonos app is great for playing various music in different rooms or sync them up as one. The interface is beautiful and really easy to use. I have the original Play 5 and the Play 1, and I've been really thinking about the new Sonos 1 with Alexa built in. The sound quality from any Sonos speaker is really good with its deep, rich bass and clean highs without any distortion. There are so many music sources that you can add, which makes the whole Sonos system extremely versatile. Uninstalling macOS app is easy. You just drag the app to the trash can and boom, you're done. But sometimes there are just some lingering files left. And if you really want to make sure everything related to that app is gone, download App Cleaner. It's a free program that will search for any and all the files related to that one app that you're trying to delete. Next app that I want to show you is Plex. This is an app that will aggregate all your media, whether they're on your local hard drive or on a NAS server, and stream to all your computers. The interface is clean, easy to navigate, and best of all, it's not limited to just Mac OS and Windows. There is a client app for very smart TVs like Samsung and LG that will stream your videos directly to them. Lastly, this has got to be one of my favorite apps, and it lives in my menu bar, iStat. It provides really useful information at a glance. Things like your CPU and GPU temperature, your upload download speed, hard drive capacity, how much of your CPU and RAM is being used, battery life cycle, and so much more. There are a ton of options to customize, from what information you would like to display to the color schemes that you want to use. With this recent update, it will even display a weather icon. Super useful. I've been using this over the last seven years and have installed on every single Mac I have. It's just that good. So these are some of the everyday apps that I use on my Mac. Just like those what's on my phone videos, I find these what's on my computer videos extremely useful in discovering programs that I otherwise wouldn't have known about. Let me know if you have any questions down in the comments section. And make sure to check out my what's on my iPhone 10 video here. So if you like this video, let me know by giving me a thumbs up. It's truly appreciate it. And if you want to see more videos like this, all you got to do is hit that subscribe button and the bell next to it, and you'll be on the notification squad when I drop a new video. This is Bell. Hey, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.